you're underway. Um, I was th thinking about this particular slide that, that's up and uh, thought I should mention that that's the, uh, the Yale. Uh, if you look closely, you can see the little chevrons on the, uh, the first funnel. Yes. Uh, they're like, well, corporal chevrons. Anyway, so that, that would date the picture to uh, after 1920. And uh, we were trying to decide where this was, and we decided that it was San Diego. However, I recently saw a picture of the Harvard, uh, which was the sister ship, leaving San Francisco, and it's almost identical to this. So this, this may be San Francisco, I don't know. Anyway, um, there's going to be a, a short inter intermission uh, midway through, about five minutes. I think Bruce mentioned this. Uh, you can get a drink of water or use the restroom, whatever you want to do. And then at the end, we're going to have a, a, a raffle. And uh, you don't have to do anything to be in the raffle except to uh, stay with the, uh, with the presentation at the end because uh, those people that are in the uh, uh, participants uh, list will be the, the people that uh, will be uh, in the drawing. There are three raffle items. I'm going to show you pictures of them at the end. And uh, I will mail those uh, to whoever the winners are. Uh, as I said, you don't need to do anything to be eligible. Uh, if you don't want the items, send Bruce a, uh, an email that you don't want him. He already got one yesterday. Uh, somebody was downsizing and they didn't, they didn't want anything else. I uh, must've been talking to my wife because, uh, she keeps telling me to get rid of stuff too. Anyway, uh, that's it. So, uh, can you see my email address? It's blocked by your, the, uh, the pictures on my screen, but but I think uh, oops. Go back. Yep, it's there. Okay, I'm going to repeat my uh, email address at the end. So if you need to uh, to see that again. All right. So uh, this this presentation is going to concentrate or or focus on steamship China, but there's other other types. Uh, Railroad, Army and Navy uh, China. Um, I can't see my uh, my screen here. Bruce, how do I get rid of this? Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Move it, to, move it to the side. Yeah, that did it. OK, Hotel uh, China. China was made for yachts. Uh, Sailing ship China, which is very rare, uh, airline China, uh, decorative bric-a-brac stuff, and of course your personal uh, dishware, uh, another category of China. But this one's going to photo, or this talk's going to focus on steamship China. <coughs> okay, so uh, China is is really heavy heavy crockery, and. Uh, the reason that they uh, they made it heavy is so that it's not easily broken, which you can imagine on ship shipboard it could be uh, easily broken. Silverware and silver pieces uh, are actually silver plated for the most part, but they have hallmarks uh, usually that show who made them <laughs> and when they were made. Uh, my experience has been that modern cruise ships don't have any of this this type of uh, china. Uh, maybe your experience is different, but the cruise ships I've been on have just had plain white dishes and uh, you know, flatware that bends when you get anything heavy on it. <laughs> okay, so the uh, shipping lines utilize China and, and also the uh, railroads and uh, other uh, airlines and that. Uh, they utilize China as, a, as an advertising media and also to limit theft. Uh, as, as you probably know, uh, you, you like to take a souvenir home from a ship, and uh, China was, was a prime target. Um, the China 
that we're talking about usually includes a logo. Uh, house flags predominated, but also uh, designs uh, without a, a, a logo of the company uh, were, were um, prevalent too. And again, railroads, airlines, hotels use the same thing. Uh, China's really heavy, uh, heavy duty porcelain or crockery. And you'll, you'll see on the back uh, where it says vitrified. And that just means that they, uh, they fuse the, uh, the glaze by firing it in a, uh, in a kiln. Uh, fine china uh, did exist, but it was reserved for first class. I guess they figured they were, uh, would be more careful and not break <laughs> the stuff. You have uh, registered designs and stock patterns. And I'll show you some examples of those. Uh, and you, you might be surprised at what is a stock pattern versus what is registered. And when I say registered, uh, that means the design was filed with the uh, US Patent Office or the equivalent in, in foreign countries. And so it's sort of like a patent. Uh, a lot of the designs are actually decals that were laid onto the porcelain or the, the china and then either fired or not fired. I'll show you an example of one that was not fired and you can see where the decal is kind of worn off. Stock patterns predominate, but uh, they could be modified to accommodate uh, house flags and different logos and that sort of thing. All right, uh, we talked about registered, and those were the designs where uh, the company uh, or, you know, I guess a person wanted to protect that design, and so they would register it, and then nobody else could use it without their permission. Um, Canadian Pacific and Los Angeles Steamship, come, or Can Canadian Pacific Empress uh, pattern, and Los Angeles uh, Steamship Company pattern, poppy patterns uh, were registered. Uh, Matson, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, was not, and I, I'm quite surprised. Uh, when you see it, you'll, you'll understand. So uh, again, the uh, stock patterns could be uh, customized with a logo or you know, anything that the, the uh, shipping line wanted. Okay, so this is a Matson plate, and this is called their Bam Bombay uh, pattern. It was not registered. Uh, it's a stock pattern. And uh, this is kind of uh, amazes me because uh, it's such a, a, an unusual pattern that uh, I would have thought somebody would have borrowed it. And uh, I'll also mention that if you look in the center of the pattern or the center of the plate, you can see a bird. The rest of it are uh, just flowers and, uh, and plants and that sort of thing. Um, this slide says this is a back stamp, but that's that's actually the top mark. I guess I, I made a mistake on that. Okay, so here's the Los Angeles Steamship Company registered pattern on the left, and that's the top mark. And as you can see, it's a combination of the logo and, uh, and a floral uh, pattern. Uh, the picture on the right-hand side is the back side or the back stamp. And uh, you can see where it says registered US Patent Office made expressly for Los Angeles Steamship Company. And if you look down at the bottom where that red arrow is, uh, there's an impression in the China, and I don't know what it says. It's it's un, unreadable as far as I'm concerned, but uh, those do appear occasionally. Uh, in fact, uh, quite often you'll see a, an impression in the China. This is just a, uh, a close up or an enlargement of that logo that was on the uh, uh, LA Steamship Company uh, poppy pattern. And what you see here is a ring with the house flag in the center. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more about these uh, rings and 
in a, in a minute here. Okay, so I've been talking about top marks and back stamps. Uh, the top marks are those uh, designs that are on the on the face of the plate or the the eating the food portion of the plate or whatever item it happens to be. And then on the back where all of the uh, manufacturer information, that's called the back stamp, or sometimes people call it a bottom marks. Uh, back stamp, I think, is, uh, is more uh, prevalent. And we'll, we'll talk about these more a little later. OK, so house flags and garters are the most frequently used designs for top marks. Um, Garters and garter belts are old symbols. They're not, uh, you know, what we might think of today, but they're associated with the military and royal organization, stemming from the most noble order of the garter uh, that was established in the year 1348. So it's it's a quite old uh, old thing. And the British, I think, will uh, will have uh, these terms uh, more than than we do here. Floral designs are, are common too. So garters are similar to life rings. And uh, again, in a, in a couple of slides in the, uh, ahead, you're going to see the differences. Uh, government agencies also had China. Uh, the US Shipping Board has, you know, has its own China. The Navy and the uh, Army both have their own China. Coast and Geodetic Survey, which is now NOAA, uh, had their own design too. I don't know whether NOAA does or not, but uh, I have a few pieces from the Coast and Geodetic Survey. I think that uh, later shipping uh, companies tended to use floral patterns uh, rather than their house flags, but I, I'm not certain of that. Okay, so on the left side is a ring pattern with a house flag. And uh, these are top marks, by the way. And on the uh, right hand side is a life ring with a uh, house flag. Uh, the Admiral line was also, well, it was actually the Pacific Steamship Company. The Admiral line was kind of a, a nickname for it. And it, had, it stemmed from uh, early predecessors of Pacific uh, Steamship Company that named all their ships Admiral this or Admiral that. So this is a silver piece with a garter on it. And this is the Canadian Pacific. You can see the, the difference between a garter and a, uh, and a ring or a, uh, a life ring is that it has a, a buckle down at the bottom. Uh, you can you can see that where the uh, where that red arrow is. And this is a Canadian Pacific line. That's their house flag in the center, and you can see their name. This is a life ring and uh, what's known as a, a platter. Well, actually, it's a bowl, um, but you can see the uh, the logo with the life ring uh, and the flag above. And that's again Pacific Steamship Company. Uh, the Admiral line, the one you saw previously. Okay, uh, collecting China can take up a lot of space. It's bulky, it's heavy. Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> I I uh, decided to clear my my collection out, and I found that I had 19 big boxes in the garage. Uh, I think I'm down to about 15 now, but uh, I was collecting everything, and I've been doing it for about 50 years, so I had quite a bit. What I would suggest is that that people specialize somehow, either uh, you know a particular line like the Pacific Steamship Company, or the types of pieces like bowls or butter pats, uh, or Silver pieces, the same thing, uh, you know, specialized. Uh, silverware. You can collect uh, <coughs> silver and china together, let's say for one particular uh, company or line or one type of, uh, of, of piece. 
or you can collect them to sell and trade. Uh, this is, would be another thing too that you wouldn't have them very long, but but that's a possibility. <clears throat> okay, so China silver pieces and even silverware come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, I think that if you think about everyday uh, uh, pieces, uh, you realize that they there are different shapes and and an oval dish, uh, for example, is called a, a platter. And uh, so all of these different shapes are categorized by certain types of names. And that, that next uh, paragraph there shows you some examples of the types of things that, that are, are possible to uh, collect. Most of these things are shown in the references, and I'm gonna, I'll have some references at the end if you're interested, but uh, they, uh, they tend to cover many pages, so I didn't really, really wanna show that, but they, they do categorize them. So as I said before, an oval shaped dish is a platter, and this particular one is uh, Pacific Coast Steamship Company, the Santa Rosa pattern. And if you notice that uh, logo or on top, it's a, a P intertwined with a C and SS company. Um, this was one of the first pieces that I, I ever got. And it, it came from uh, underwater actually uh, at Redondo Beach. There used to be uh, wharves there. And I originally thought that this was a very old piece, but it turns out it's it's the newest of that group. And anyway, we'll get into that a little bit later. This is just another example. Uh, this is the Clyde line. This is what's called a butter pat. It's only three inches in diameter. Um, I don't guess butter pats are used much anymore, but they used to be. You get served a piece of butter or a slab of butter on that thing. I, I don't think I've ever even seen those pieces of butter anymore, but anyway. Uh, you can collect china and silver and silverware together. Uh, I do, but mine's kind of haphazard. I'm not collecting any one particular line any, uh, except anymore now that I'm, I'm getting rid of stuff. I'm keeping certain things. I use a lot of it every day, uh, not so much the china because uh, I'm afraid I'll, I'll break it, but uh, the silver pieces and silverware especially, uh, I prefer to eat off it every day. Now my wife, my wife does not like it. She refuses to use it. And uh, we had some old floppy uh, flatware and so I, I bought uh, a new set that is real heavy and won't bend, but she still refuses to use my stuff. I do use uh, one piece of china, and I'll show you a picture of it in a minute. And it's an ice cream dish that I use as a soap dish. Okay. And... Hello? I, I'm hearing somebody, but anyway. So could you mute your phone, your, your device? Not so much. You ready, honey? Arthur, can you pick up the device? Oh. I'll go ahead, Bruce. So. Yeah. Um, everybody, please mute your, your device. Cause we, we are getting a little bleed through in, in places. Anyway, this is the soap dish. It's a Graceline, uh, or not a soap dish, but an ice cream dish from Graceline. Uh, the picture on the uh, right hand side shows the back stamp. And you can see it says Syracuse, China, Syracuse, China and then Gracelines. Uh, this pattern on the left was what I guess Grace used uh, for their China wear. These are some of the uh, forks that I use every day. And the one on the, uh, the left is the Portland, or the San Francisco and Portland Steamship Company. The middle one is the Pacific Steamship Company. 
And then the uh, one on the right is actually a railroad piece from the Northern Pacific Railroad. But it was such a nice piece, I decided uh, to use it. Now, one of the problems with using stuff is that a lot of it's worn out and uh, the silver's either, either coming off or the, uh, the tangs are worn away on the end, but I still use them anyway, I don't care. This is a close-up of that San Francisco and Portland uh, fork. This is what would be the top mark on a, on a piece of, of uh, silverware. Another top mark from the, uh, the other fork that was in the center. Uh, I wanted to show you this so you could see how they, they stamp the uh, uh, life ring and the uh, house flag and their name on, on the uh, silverware. Some spoons, uh, again, I use these every day too. Uh, the one on the left is Pacific Steamship Company. The center is the uh, Northeast uh, Steamship, or I think it may be, it may be New England, I'm not sure. I may have made a mistake on that one. New England Steamship Line, I think. And then on the, uh, the right, uh, uh, this one's for Gordon, uh, American President Lines. And the interesting thing about this one is that the, the name American President Lines is on the back uh, where the back stamp would be. So they come in, you know, those, those names come in both places. This is a, uh, a sauce bottle holder from the uh, Augustus. I bought this from uh, our, one of our members, uh, Peter Canego. And uh, I use it as a salt and pepper shaker, but it, I see it every day, it's on the table. And it came from uh, the Augustus, which was an Italian liner. And that's a close up that, that shows uh, the Italian line stamp on it. Okay, a piece of silver, this is a sugar bowl. And again, the, the top mark is on the side the other side has no uh, no mark on it or no uh, logo, but you can see that uh, life ring logo with the uh, Pacific uh, Steamship Company house flag uh, in the center. Again, that's a top mark. On the right hand side is the bottom uh, or the back back stamp. Now, in this case, uh, you would have either you know the name uh, engraved in it, like like this one. Or you might have hallmarks, and hallmarks are, well, actually, there's a hallmark on this one down in the, the lower right-hand corner near the, uh, where it says eight ounces. That thing to the right is a hallmark. I'm not sure what it, what it says. Uh. Okay, uh, we're going to take five minutes, uh, as Bruce said, uh, and then we'll get started. Uh, the remainder of the, the talk is about as long as, as this, so. Uh, take five minutes and come on back. Be sure to come back if you want to be eligible for the uh, raffle. So uh, China was made by manufacturers and was then distributed by distributors. <laughs> and uh, the manufacturers were, were worldwide, but the distributors were usually uh, national or within the country of the uh, steamship line. So, for, for instance, here in the United States, they were they were uh, in San Francisco, uh, places in Ohio and New York, places like that. Uh, generic pieces of China supplemented the top mark pieces. So, for example. You might have a, a top mark piece, and I'll, I'll show you some later. Uh, but you might have a plain dish or, or a piece without the logo and uh, the, the design on it uh, that they use to supplement the, the table setting. And because, you know, pieces got broken and that sort of thing, too. So they, they supplemented the top mark pieces. And most of the manufacturers and distributors also 
made hotel, railroad, and airline, uh, well, in the early days, not airline, but other types of China. Uh, a top mark, I don't know whether I showed you this or not, but I, anyway, I'll go over it again. The top mark is any logo, design, or symbol on the, the top of the piece, the, the part that where the food goes. Uh, but it may lack a top mark too. You know, there may be just a pattern like on that uh, Matson that one, or it may la lack any kind of design or a thing. But when you turn it over, it might say the name of the uh, steamship line. The back stamp or the bottom uh, mark, uh, you can have the name of the line, the manufacturer, uh, the distributor, uh, all three of them, or just the manufacturer and distributor, or two of them, or nothing. Just depends. Uh, most of them have the manufacturer and the distributor on the back. There's also uh, that impression that I pointed out before, and that's usually made by the manufacturer. As sometimes it's a date code or you know some mark that they uh, uh, they want to put in there, but they're hard to uh, to see, and often they're not complete. Okay, so here's the the Matson plate again, and on the uh, right hand side is the back stamp. So it says OP Company, Syracuse, China. OP. Uh, it's hard to pronounce, it's a, an Indian name, and it was the name of the, the pottery company before Sir, Syracuse uh, bought it. And I think we'll, we'll see that again. And down at the bottom, or in the middle, it says 0 11. That's the date code. And some, sometimes a date will be on there, it'll, it'll just be a plain date that you can read. Other times it's a code, other times it's not there at all. And as you can see, uh, this piece was made expressly for Matson. I imagine that Syracuse uh, owned the, the uh, registration of the pattern, but I'm not sure of that. There's that platter again from the uh, Pacific Coast Steamship Company. This is the one that, uh, that I got underwater I'm going to say in the late 1960s, uh, when I was still young and uh, diving, and uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. I think uh, at a previous meeting I did talk about those wharves, and uh, uh, you can still find China there, I believe. Anyway, on the right-hand side is the back stamp of that piece, and you can see see that it says vitrified Acme China. And then it has a crown, Wooden Sons, England. Uh, Wooden Sons is the manufacturer. And usually the English uh, manufacturers had a crown of some sort on there. Uh, again, these are, are decals that they put on the back. And then down at the bottom, it says Anglo-American Crockery uh, Company, or uh, yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but anyway, and something or other. Anyway, they're the distributor, and they were in San Francisco. Okay, so as I said, uh, if there is a date present, it'll be the actual date or it'll be a code. And the code represents a date. And these codes are often listed in the references. So, for example, uh, that previous one I showed you, 0-11. I didn't know what it meant. Uh, I could take a guess, but I didn't know what it meant. But I, I found it in one of the references. So if you're lacking a date or a code on the back, you can also approximate the date uh, by a method that uh, I'm going to show you about here. Basically, it, it involves taking the life existence of the steamship line, the manufacturer, and the distributor and figuring out what that narrows down to. So I'll show you a little chart here in a minute. OK, so here's that date code that we were, were looking at on the back, 0-11. 
the zero means 1935. I got that out of a, a reference. The uh, OP company is the Onondaga Pottery Company, which became Syracuse, China in 1871. And they used at least four different back stamps during the period that they were manufacturing this uh, pottery for the uh, uh, Matson, the Bombay uh, pattern, the, uh, between 1930 and 1952. Then uh, Matson switched to Meyer or Mayer, and uh, they manufactured the, the pattern for them. So I, I guess that would mean that, uh, uh, or at least perhaps Syracuse did not have a registered uh, pattern of that. Okay, here's a chart. This, this illustrates how you might get a relative date for a piece. And you can use this for other things too. Uh, I use this for, uh, for paintings, this, this concept anyway. So the, the line was ex, uh, in existence from 1890 to 1920. The manufacturer was in existence from 1900 to 1920, but the distributor was only in business from 1910 to 1920. So your relative date is 1910 to 1920. You've narrowed it down, you know, from all of those dates. You can also use brochures to date a pattern. Sometimes the brochures will have pictures uh, inside of a, of a dining room with a particular uh, design on the table that you can you can determine as you know what you're looking for. There's also photographs uh, available that can be used in the same way. Also, the references uh, are very good about uh, supplying dates. Somebody has, the author has, you know, gone to the trouble of figuring out when these things were were made. Okay, so various authors have assigned. Uh, labeling and pattern names to the China. You'll see some of these in a minute. Uh, they are different amongst the different uh, authors. And the reason generally is that new information has come along. And so uh, the current author has changed the labeling uh, pattern. Uh, usually they don't change it too much, but I'm using uh, Actually, I spelled his name wrong. It should be Jacques. Should be an S on the end of Jacques there. Jacques uh, Marx system. Jacques is uh, is an author of a book that you'll see later, and he's up in the uh, British Columbia area. Okay, this is a milk pitcher on the uh, uh, left hand side of the screen from the Pacific Coast Steamship Company. Uh, I was very lucky to get this. It's about seven inches tall. And then uh, the one, uh, the picture on the right just shows the handle. And uh, what I wanted to tell you about this uh, is that that flag and the letters are decal, but they're on the outside of the glaze. So that if you look closely at the, uh, the S, the first S and the center of the flag, you'll see that the milk dripping down <laughs> Uh, kind of faded that uh, that decal out because it was vulnerable to uh, wear because it's on the outside of the glaze. The glaze is the uh, clear uh, material that's on the outside of uh, china pieces. And so this is a, a pattern uh, that Jacques has uh, labeled as PCS1. And that's that flag and the uh, PCS, it comes in different sizes, but the, the pattern is generally the same. Now, there is a PCS 1A where the, the red iron cross in the center is blue. I've never seen one of those, but I, he's got a picture of one in his book. These are from uh, the same company. The one on the left is the Coos Bay pattern. And it's called the PCS2. And then on the right is PCS3, the Santa Rosa pattern. Now the Saturn, Santa Rosa pattern is the pattern that I found on these old wharfs at Redondo in the, in the late 60s. And I assumed 
that it looked older, so it must be older. But it's actually the newest of those three. The uh, oldest is that one I showed you previously on the milk pitcher. And the next oldest is the, uh, the one on the left. And uh, the newest is that, that one that looks the oldest to me. <laughs> uh, these are the back stamps on, on uh, uh, the PCS3 piece in the previous slide on the left. Uh, John Maddock and Sons, England, and then Nathan Dorman Company in San Francisco was the distributor. Uh, Nathan Dorman uh, is important, it, as are all distributors, because you can date the time that Nathan Dorman was in business, and then it helps you date the piece. The one on the right is from the milk pitcher that you saw before. And Burley and Company, I believe, was just a distributor. But some of the distributors applied decals and uh, supplied these uh, China pieces to the steamship companies. So you can see that Burley and Company, Chicago, hotel department. Anyway, that's on the bottom of that milk picture that you saw on the previous slide. Here's some silverware. Uh, this is the Pacific Mail Steamship Company uh, silverware. Uh, these are these date from before 1925. I'm not sure when, but they're in excellent condition. And somebody had them on eBay, and I bought four of them. And uh, the only thing is, you can see on the on the right hand side, you can see a little flaw in the uh, top of the picture. But those uh, those are hallmarks on the uh, on the back stamp or bottom side of the, these are forks. And uh, so you can see those. Uh, Pacific Coast Steamship Company again on the left hand side. This is an example of, I would call it a uh, generic or supplemental plate, but they were part of the Santa Rosa part uh, pattern. Uh, and they were used to supplement that that one with the uh, intertwined letters. And then uh, I think I, I've shown you this one before. This is the uh, a fork or a spoon with the Pacific Steamship Company. Now, you may be confused by Pacific Coast Steamship Company and Pacific Steamship Company. Uh, Pacific Coast Steamship Company was started about 1875 in San Francisco. It was originally called the uh, Goodall and Nelson line or something like that. Anyway, they changed it to Pacific Coast Steamship Company. They lasted until 1916 when the Alaska Pacific or Pacific Alaska Company, they're, they're, both of those are correct, uh, took over uh, the Pacific Coast Steamship Company and changed their name to Pacific Steamship Company. And that house flag that you can see there uh, was originally the Pacific Coast Steamship Company's house flag without the, the four stars in the corner. This is a butter pat, and uh, again, it has the green stripes. Sorry for the label I've got on it, but I, I decided that if I tried to peel it off, it wouldn't, wouldn't look too good. Anyway, it's a butter pat. It's only about three inches in diameter, and it's just an example of some of the supplemental pieces that uh, now I have seen the uh, butter pats from this company uh, with a different design. Uh, in fact, I have a couple. They have a different pattern on them. They have that PCS2 pattern on them. This is a piece of broken uh, crockery that I also got in Redondo uh, off the wharf uh, in the late 60s. And it shows the uh, a green pinstripe uh, like on the previous one, but this is a different company. Now on eBay right now, there is a complete uh, saucer for sale, uh, just like this one. Uh, and it has no other uh, design on it, just those pinstripes. And then the on the right hand side is the back stamp and you can see it was made for the Los Angeles Steamship Company. Now Los Angeles Steamship Company uh, had a different pattern later on, and you'll see it uh, coming up. 
Uh, this slide just tells the difference between the two words, uh, shard and shard. Uh, basically, they're the same. They're broken pieces of anything, glass, china, crockery, in our case, china. Uh, shard is mostly used by archaeologists. Most people use the word shard. So sources of China, if you wanted to collect it, uh, of course, antique stores, special shows. There are like a transportation show down in uh, Buena Park. I, I don't think it's uh, open any longer, but uh, they used to have a lot of pieces of China. Flea markets. I've never uh, never seen any at a flea market, but I'm sure they, they are there. Auctions and then eBay. And I, I've gotten an awful lot on eBay. And so it's a very good source if you're interested. And the prices have come way down uh, since eBay uh, came into existence. Of course, you've got other collectors. And uh, like I say, the prices have decreased over the years. What you used to pay $100 for, you can now get for maybe 10. Uh, old wharves, uh, I talked about this before, but it requires diving uh, because it's underwater. I'll have a little more to tell you about that in a minute. Um, there are, are many old wharf sites and uh, that fella uh, that Jacques Marc uh, specializes in diving on old wharves and uh, getting the china. Um, I haven't done any of that diving in a long time but uh, I'm sure that China is still in, in Redondo if you're, if you're interested. Um, another source is the pantry of a shipwreck. I have a friend who got 200 pieces out of a shipwreck and uh, he can't give them away. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, they're really nice. Uh, shards on the beach, another uh, potential uh, source. There is a uh, wrecked Manila galleon down in uh, in Baja, California, and some friends of mine have gotten pieces of real China from China uh, on the beach there, but they're all broken, of course. There's uh, another place up in Oregon, I think you can do the same thing. And then uh, at Drake's Bay in California, uh, there was a uh, galleon wrecked there too. And I believe that there are China pieces and it's also the same place that supposedly uh, Drake uh, careened his ship and perhaps some of the China came from that. I'm just showing this one because this is typical of what I got on the wharf at uh, Redondo. But I also wanted to note that this is a platter the same as the one that I previously shown, but note how the edge is scalloped and there's a design on the end. It just shows that platters and different pieces come in different uh, shapes and sizes and designs. Uh, we already covered this. Okay, a privy. <laughs> Of course, a privy is, a, uh, is an old uh, toilet or uh, outhouse, if you want to call it that. Anyway, uh, some very old and rare pieces were found in one by some archaeologists. Um, this friend of mine, uh, Mark, or, uh, Jacques Marc, uh, sent me some pictures, which I'll show you uh, later, that, where these pieces were found in the basically an outhouse. And then there's a chapter raffles. Uh, we've been giving uh, a lot of uh, China away in the raffles when we were meeting on board. And we will continue to do that. Uh, you know, if we, we get back on board and have physical meetings and, you know, there you're looking at maybe 10 or 20 pieces that you, uh, you have a chance at getting. Of course, you got to buy your tickets for that one. Okay, so this is the uh, piece that was found in the privy. And uh, I'll show you the bottom. It's from the Pacific Mail Steamship Company. It's very early. I, I would really love to have a piece of this, but, but I don't. 
Uh, and as you can see, there's the top mark is just a design, a floral design, but it's from about the 1850s, 1860s. This is what's on the bottom. This is the bottom stamp, and so you can see it's Pacific Mail Steamship Company. And this was made in, in England. I don't know who the distributors were. They, it might have been the, uh, the manufacturer, uh, Mayers. This uh, is a, another example of a garter. And you can see the buckle at the bottom. And of course, one of their early steamships in the, in the center. The, the 1266 and that symbol is probably something that was put on there by the manufacturer when these pieces were made, but I, I don't know what they are. <coughs> okay. Uh, one time when I was diving at Rodondo, uh, I came upon a pile of, of China and uh, I didn't understand why I <laughs> this you know, was there in a pile. And uh, later I was uh, visiting a, a fellow and uh, I told him about it. And he says, well, I can tell you what that was. He says, I used to be a steward on those ships. And uh, we'd come back from shore leave drunk or tired and they didn't want to do all the dishes. So they just heave whole, whole cartloads over the side. And uh, of course, they're not going to heave it over onto the, the pier. And they, they heaved it over onto the... Uh, the ocean side, and so when I found this, it was like 30 or 40 feet from the uh, from the old pilings, and there were no broken pieces in that, that pile either. I gave most of it away. I probably had, well, I had to share it, so uh, I probably had about 10 pieces, but I gave most of them away, and then later, <laughs> I, when I got serious about this, I uh, I had to buy some of them back. They weren't given back. They, I had to buy them back. So this is a postcard of that that pier at Redondo. And uh, you can see the ships there. And you can see that you wouldn't throw it over onto the, uh, the pier side or the wharf side. You'd throw it into the water. OK, so uh, value. Uh, like I said before, generally, the value has declined because there's a much uh, bigger supply of the stuff. I guess supply and demand based on eBay and you know other sources uh, make availability better. This is especially true of silver pieces. They they the prices on silver has really dropped. I guess nobody wants it. Uh, I don't want to have to polish it and that, that sort of thing. OK, here are the references that I talked about before. Um, if anybody wants these, I will send them to you in an email so you don't have to write them down unless you want to. I'm going to leave them up for just a minute here in, in case there's anything. I do want to point out at the bottom there that Silver at Your Service is co-authored by one of our members, uh, Rudy. Uh, uh, Morgan Fru. Uh, I don't think Rudy's on today, but uh, uh, I was looking at that book one time and I said, I know that guy. <laughs> anyway, uh, Rudy is a member and uh, I used to see him at a lot of shows. He, he uh, I think he was selling a lot of the uh, uh, silver and stuff that he had collected over the years. But uh, he's a good one to talk to if you're interested in uh, in silverware or China. And uh, he'll probably be at our next meeting. This is the second set of references. That top one is the one I've been referring to, Jacques Mark. And it's best for Pacific Coast China uh, because it's it specializes or it focuses on Pacific Coast uh, shipping lines. It also includes the government lines, though, too. And, uh, you know, like Canadian Pacific and then uh, U.S. government lines like uh, the U.S. Shipping Board, the Navy, and the Army. Uh, believe it or not, the Army had more ships than the Navy at one time. And I don't know if that's still true, but I have a lot of Army uh, transport uh, China.
this is a picture of that book by uh, Jacques Marc. And uh, just so you can see, it is still available. I think it's still in print. And uh, I got mine from the uh, British Columbia uh, Museum who uh, published it. And it has a real nice uh, laminated cover on it. So that that colored thing that you see there is is not a uh, dust jacket. It's it's part of the hardcover of the of the book, so it'll last a long time. The page on the right hand side is for uh, Pacific Coast Steamship Company, uh, at least the bottom bottom three. And you can see those patterns, uh, a couple of them that I was talking about earlier. Los Angeles Steamship Company, I, I told you that they changed the design. You may recognize this design uh, from Cunard, although these seem a bit cruder uh, than Cunard's pieces, but they're basically cubes. And as you can see on the bottom, it says uh, Los Angeles Steamship Company. So, uh, but they were made in England by the same company that made the ones for Cunard, sort of an Art Nouveau design. That uh, one on the left is a little creamer. It's only about two inches high, and it's for coffee cream. OK, this is the first of the raffle prizes. This is a cup and saucer. I don't know what line this is, but it must be uh, Dutch, because on the bottom it says Amsterdam. And then it, uh, it was made in Bavaria, which of course is part of Germany. So uh, that's a complete cup and saucer. It's a Demitas cup, so it's a small cup. It's not a, a full size cup. Uh, some people collect these uh, Demitas uh, cups and saucers. Second item is a butter pat from the United States lines. Now, this is their original uh, logo. It's not the one that they used uh, most recently. And uh, there are two little flaws in that. You can see them in the picture, but they're uh, almost all of the China has little flaws in it. This, this particular one happens to be on the front in a bad spot, but still a nice piece. The third one, Gordon, are you still there? I guess he's not. Anyway, the yep, Gordon, I'm here. Oh, yep. okay. Yep. American President lines, it. but it's not uh, it's not the type that you like. Anyway, no, it's, not it's, the... it's a saucer, and so those are the uh, the raffle items. Uh, this is the bottom of that APL plate, just for uh, Gordon's uh, information. Made by Sterling in Ohio. Uh, the G four. I believe means that that's a saucer, but I'm not sure of that either. Okay, so that's the end of it. Uh, this slide really doesn't apply to uh, Zoom meetings, but uh, I like it, so I'm showing it again anyway. And uh, I've got a, one, one or two more slides here, and then uh, that'll be it. Get online. Yeah. Okay, so if, if you have any questions, uh, send them to me in an email. Uh, I thought this would be the best way. There is a, a chat session in the uh, in the Zoom meetings, but uh, we thought that might be a little too hard for you to do while, while you're watching the, the the slides and that. So, if you wanna, if you have any questions, you can uh, email me and I'll I'll answer them. I think that is yeah, that's it, Bruce. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and, and hand it back to you.